principals, and welcome to the NAESP Principal Podcast. My name is Rachel George. I'm an educational leader in Oregon and an NAESP fellow. And my name is Adam Welcome. I'm an educator in California and also a fellow with Rachel and NAESP in the Innovation Center. Woohoo. So, hey, Adam and I are always so excited to bring you all this episode of the NAESP Principal Podcast. So we can talk about real ideas with some amazing principals, and in this case, some amazing folks that help support principals to help make your leadership stronger and more innovative. Yeah, our guest for today, Dr. Marjorie Wexler, Principal Research Manager at LPI Learning Policy Institute, where they really do a lot of things. They have a really robust website, learningpolicyinstitute.org, where she leads mixed methods, research studies related to teacher and leader quality, a whole bunch of different research papers and such, author, first time podcaster, Marjorie, Ooh. welcome to the show. Thank you. It's great to be here this morning. Yeah, we love first timers because sometimes we'll get people with like a couple hundred podcasts under their belt. But uh, I think hopefully you'll see it's just a uh, it's pretty casual conversation. So let's just kick it off. Uh, you were part of a large report that was just released around what kind of learning matters when it comes to developing effective principles. Uh, Rachel and I were super excited to read the read the report. Former principals ourselves. Can you share with our listeners how you went about collecting? and determining what kind of learning mattered? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there were a couple things we did um, in terms of figuring out what matters for principals and their learning opportunities. It was a very comprehensive literature review that we did. We looked at peer-reviewed research um, since 2000, um, and we first identified nearly 1,400 studies to look at. We did some initial screening of titles and abstracts, um, and we actually even going through some of those studies, we added more studies, we added about 80 more studies. And we were looking at those studies that focused on K-12 schools in the US that really have a focus on what the learning opportunities were that were offered to principals and what the outcomes were. Um, from that, we were able to pare it down from those studies that at first looked like they would be um, answering those questions and then didn't. And we ended up with 54 studies of preparation and 52 studies of um, ongoing professional development for principals when two studies addressed both. And so from that, we were able to, as I said, do this very comprehensive review of the literature to understand what matters. Um, there are a couple other things that we did as part of the study. I don't know if you want me to talk about them now or hold on. Um, so we, so from the literature review, we're, we were able to determine what matters, what are the elements of principal learning, but we were also interested in understanding to what extent principals had access to those good learning opportunities. So we um, analyzed a number of principal surveys that we had. We had a national survey of principals, thank you to um, NAESP and NASSP. We also had a couple of statewide, representative statewide surveys of principals from California and North Carolina. And these surveys really were looking at individual principals' access to what, what their preparation looked like, what their professional development opportunities were. And then the third thing we did was we wanted to understand what difference policies make. So we did a very comprehensive review of state policies. Um, what, was the, what were the history and the trends and policies for supporting principal learning? So as you see, it was quite um, a large study, a large uh, task, but we were able to pull it all together. Excellent. Large to say the least. That is very, very true. And it is a very comprehensive report having having read that. So one of the things that I noticed in your report is that there was definitely a need for high quality prep programs as it was connected back to really finding and developing the positive principal teacher and also having positive student outcomes. And this is a great key takeaway for educators, especially as they're shopping around trying to find degree programs or professional development opportunities. So I'm really curious, what are some key characteristics that an aspiring 
aspiring leader or even a current leader that's looking to grow their practice maybe should be looking for in terms of trying to define and identify that high quality program? So at least their money is well spent. What are those characteristics? Yeah. So we found a couple of things. One, we found that what principles learn matters. I, and maybe this sounds obvious, but but the research shows that, you know, principles there, you, you know, as principles yourselves, this job is all encompassing and it has many parts and principles need to learn how to lead instruction, right? How to develop students, higher order skills, how to select effective curricula. They need to learn how to improve schools, how to to look at data and know where their school needs are. They have to know how to establish positive uh, working conditions for teachers and how to create a positive school climate for students as well. Um, so, you know, for teachers, how do you create a collaborative work environment where, where teachers are valued and their expertise is, is understood? Uh, how do you work with school and community stakeholders? Um, they need to know how to develop their staff and support teachers. Um, and another area that's just emerging in the research um, is how do you meet the needs of all learners? Um, and new research is showing that this is actually something principals can can learn about through their programs and activities. So um, how do you meet the diverse students? So one thing that as and current principles or current principles can look yeah. at what they learn. There was another part, but you had a question, right? Yeah, I did. I mean, so those are fantastic characteristics. And I'm just thinking like, I have some folks within some of my buildings that are looking to enter the principalship mm -hmm. and there's a handful of different programs that they could participate in. Um, I was actually just talking to my stepson about it the other day. He was looking at comparing some different admin licensure programs, like what makes one stand out? What makes one better than the other? Because I got to be honest, oftentimes we look at the price tag and we look at how much coursework there is. So knowing that those two things are heavy hitters, how do I make that determination to, you know, pay that extra money or sign up with one versus the other? So there was the making sure that the content is comprehensive, that I, all that content I was just talking about. But something else that's really important is not just the content the principals are taught, but how they're learning. Um, that really matters. So especially important are those applied learning opportunities where you have inquiry projects or field-based projects based in real schools. And so for a preparation program, internships, um, and residencies are especially important where, where these pre-service principals can actually take on the real responsibilities of a leader, where they're actually making decisions. They're actually leading staff development and doing um, classroom visits with the mentorship of an expert principal who can support and guide them as they are learning to do th these activities. Um, so having those real experiences makes a big difference for principals to learn how to be principals. And something else is um, that's important is having a cohort or a network um, so that you have a group of professionals who are learning and growing together, where they can share their experiences um, and they can talk through ideas and say, this worked for me, maybe you wanna try it. Oh, I did this, that was a mistake. <laughs> Here's how I would do it differently. So again, um, working with others. So those are the things I would look for. In yeah, that networking uh, piece, that's how I know Rachel through Twitter. We connected. I mean, my whole professional learning network is is uh, is based off people connecting through social media and then and then connecting in, in person, which kind of leads to our next question. At one point in your report, you mentioned that access to high quality learning opportunities varies across states and by school poverty level, which can also be observed and connected back to state policies. And this is where I kind of feel the connection with connecting with other people. What advice do you have? 
have for leaders that might find themselves in areas that don't have access to high quality learning? How might they go about accessing it so they aren't victims of their circumstances and location? And I guess maybe looking for like a checklist or like, hey, you know, I would say, hey, I'm a huge fan of social media. You know, Twitter has changed my life with just being able to find other people to connect. Do you have like a handful of just suggestions or or what the research said? Um, the research doesn't say how to go about finding these programs, um, but I do know there's a lot of programs that are out there. And so even though we can show that um, different, that there are differences across states and there are differences by school poverty level in terms of principal's abilities or what they have been able to access, um, I would say doing your research, that doesn't mean that a state where it's lower, that there's not good learning opportunities available in that state. You just might not have it in your immediate area. So one is this is why connecting with other principals is so important. Um, if you can have other principals who have found strong programs or know of other things. There are things that are available at the, at the state level that you might not know about, but are available. Um, so for example, um, California has California uh, School Leadership Academy, 21st Century School Leadership Academy, which is working regionally across the entire state. Principals might not know this, but if they were looking up professional development opportunities in California, they might find a way to connect through there. Arkansas has Arkansas Leadership Academy, which is for, it's it's a pretty intensive professional development that leads to a master principal designation. Um, so even if you're in a rural area where there's not good local um, programs, there might be programs that are available through the state or regionally. Um, and I would suggest that, you know, look at what what states offer. Well, that's a great segue into our next question. It's around that state association and that state connection. So you mentioned in your report and you and your team about the need to perhaps overhaul your leadership standards and that that might be something that you could do at a district level, at your state association level, or even with the entity that does that, that licensing aspect. What advice might you have for those of are those of our listeners that maybe need to do an overhaul or maybe you're wondering if if that fits the place and the time that they're in what advice might you have for them um i would say that um there's a lot there's a lot that's going on in terms of state standards um for administrators and this report can be one um place for guidance where it's known what um, what makes for strong recommendations. And there are models out there. There are definitely models of states that have overhauled their research, uh, their, their um, principal standards. And I think looking at those models and how they have gone about doing so um, is a really great place to start also. Um, Illinois, for example, um, redid their standards and they required, for example, an internship and partnerships with districts um, between, between the IHEs and the districts. And so there are, there are definitely models. We provide some in the report um, as a place to start and see, talk to the people who did that to find out how do you create the buy-in um, for the policymakers and the IHEs who are involved in providing the preparation in many cases. Um, learn from their experiences because this has happened across the country in you know, various states. Um, and there are model standards that, you know, look at this, look at the various states. We know that states have different needs. Um, but if you look across the states and you get ideas and see what will work for your state and your state context. 
Yeah, this kind of leads us to our, our last question, which as you're talking, Marjorie, I'm thinking too about my my time when I got my um, my California admin credential. I was like so jazzed and excited. And then I got my first assistant principal job. And then I took over my first school as as a principal. And then I thought back to my certification. And I there was a lot of a lot of things that kind of it's like flying over a city. You don't see it. And I, I, I just think about like the state licensing and that entity when it comes to principal certifications, kind of changing those higher education programs. I've also done a lot of work with universities and people that are in admin programs and saying like, hey, this is what it's actually like on the ground once you get your first job in the office. And things often take time to catch up. Obviously, education, I think, is usually a little bit behind like business from that standpoint. But what advice might you have for those that see a need for change, kind of like me, but are unable to help move the dial when it comes to improvement. And I know in California, there's actually a test you can take. You can actually kind of skip the program and, and take a test. Um, and I've actually known a lot of amazing principals that that have done that. Any thoughts or ideas about that? Yes. Um, one, keep in mind that the better that, that being prepared and having those opportunities or actually re having strong learning opportunities as opposed to taking a test, it's actually been shown to make a difference, right? Good principal learning. There's research that shows principal good opportunities has an influence on principals, on their ability and skills. It's also been shown to be related to teacher satisfaction and teacher retention and student outcomes. So one, I think it's important to look for those good programs. If you're in a place and you feel that something needs to change to get back to your to get back to your question, um, things can even happen on a local level. There are the Wallace Foundation put a lot of money into the principal pipeline initiative where they were working with six districts um, to really um, create this supply of well-prepared and well-supported principles. Um, so, And these all happened on the local level where they adopted local standards and worked with IHEs and and uh, adjusted their hiring and evaluation practices so that evaluation was more supportive um, and developing principal's ability. So I would look for those local opportunities where you can have more of a difference, um, see what can be done at the at, at that level in terms of connecting principles with one another. Um, connect principles to institutions such, such as NAESP, um, where there's lot of opportunities there and and people who work at the both the national state and local levels um so i think the point is don't just sit there um being in the principalship as i'm sure you know can be very isolating and it shouldn't be and it doesn't have to be um so starting small um and sharing your experiences um, with others, including us at the Learning Policy Institute, where we can help elevate your voices and experiences, um, I think is a good place to start. Yeah, that isolation piece is uh, is huge. Rachel and I in our in our admin principal groups often say if you are on admin island in 2022, it's just completely up to you because there's so many opportunities. Obviously, in ASP in California, we have AXA in Oregon, you have OASP. There's just so many um, COSA. Sorry, there's so many just opportunities um, for people to learn and connect. Dr. Marjorie Wexler, we're going to try to link your report in the show notes. Um, if that doesn't come through learning policy policyinstitute.org backslash person backslash Marjorie hyphen Wexler. You can see kind of the latest um, from Marjorie and her team, different reports, high quality early childhood assessment, learning from states, use of kindergarten entry assessments, high quality early childhood assessments, uh, districts, advancing racial equity tool, the DARE tool. There's just a lot of uh, a lot of great information there. Speaking of NAESP, go to NAESP.org. Next July, the 10th and the 12th is the annual national conference. We were in Louisville, Kentucky last summer. It was absolutely 
Awesome. NAESP.org. Go to um, events. It's going to be in National Harbor, Maryland. The keynote speakers were just announced. Houston Craft, Joanne McEachin and Freeman Rabowski III are going to be there um, along with just really awesome people. And again, talk about learning and connecting. I know I've talked about this story before on the podcast, Rachel, my first NAESP conference in Long Beach many, 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 many years ago. Just absolutely changed my life. It led me to you and all the work that we do together, um, Rachel. So shout out to NASP, Marjorie. Thank you again. Everybody, thanks for listening. Subscribe to the podcast and we hope that you have an absolutely amazing day. 